this Elite Legionario here, bringing you a 2v2 for Napoleon Total War. I'm joined by Doc Holiday, and our opponents are Ferrum and Brubardi, and we're playing on the low D map. So, um, interesting thing is that we got to start on the side of the river and only one of them did, so I'm sure you can probably work out what the battle plan was. Um, I'm playing as Prussia, and Doc's playing as Britain. The battle plan was pretty simple. The Doc would advance up towards this town area, just kind of cordon it off with this minimum, yeah, you know, this little fort here and this bridge, just try and hold it off with as few units as possible. While I march up onto this hill and he brings the rest of his army and we just totally wipe out the other player up here, basically. So that way, that way we kind of fight in piecemeal one at a time, maximise our maximise numbers and you know, quantity and quality at the same time, instead of getting into some big hassle of one of us holding onto the bridge and one of us fighting there and we can just concentrate on one, knock them out and then go on to the next. So uh, my Prussian army consists of was four units of Slesian Schutzen. Yes, sir. Skirmishes. 125 range skirmishes. Behind them I have there's one, two, three, four, five units of musketeers. Uh, then I have a unit of experimental power officer, which I wish I didn't bring any well. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Uh, I have a unit of Jaegers over here as well. I said I would excess cash. And I have two units of foot guards for my elite infantry over here. My general is Count von Nice now. And I also have... Oh, sorry, it's two units of foot guards. And and the 8th Life Regiment, which is basically like a very elite line of infantry. So um, it's kind of handy. And I also have this... I have a Hussar and, I don't know, like Taurkis. Tawarkis, Taurkis, I don't know. Um, it's a, like an Ulan, a Lancer type cave. Um, and that's what I've also got there. Doc's force consists of, let's see, up front he's got King's German Light Foot, two King's German Light Foot. So a Light Foot there, and another Light Foot there. He's got uh, Sir John Moore as his general, another experimental howitzer there. Um, let's see, two horse cars, 10th Hussar, and Royal Scots Greys. Are they the ones that are the 125 run gun cave? Are they Royal Scots Greys? Was another, I know Britain's got a unit like that, but I forget what it's called. I like the unit though, it's a bit OP really, but it's pretty awesome. Let's see, uh, so he's got the 88 foot Kodar Rangers, and then he's got three regular foot and a cold stream guard. Okay, uh, let's check out the Austrian player. Uh, he has, let's see, he's got a unit of Karassier over here. Three units of Karassier. Wow, he's got six units of Karassier. Um, that's pretty interesting. Indeed, maybe he was thinking to get over the bridge really quickly and help his ally with lots of cab, I'm not sure, but doesn't seem to be the case though. Then he's got a seven pound howitzer, just a plain general staff, two Hungarian fusilier, and a 12 pound foot artillery over there, so it's a pretty interesting army to be honest, but you've probably got more stuff hidden. And our opponent is Sweden, now I rushed up the hill here, um, just, see, just to see if I get it, and he's recognised that I'd get the better position first, so he's going to retreat and take this defensive position, which I think is wise, because he's clearly going to get pretty much isolated. Um, although, there's still this crossing point here, so if the Austrian pair doesn't muck around, he could get, he could get over here. Um, at the very least, it's what I'd do. I'd get over here as fast as I can, but uh, before we can hold them up in this area. So anyway, the Swedish player's army is 12 pounder foot artillery. He's got a, let's see, a lifeguard, a horse, two lifeguard, a horse, and two hussars. Cab on that flank. He's got one, two, three, four line infantry. So he's got seven line infantry, he's got the Jaegers up there, but he's probably got more, and then there's general staff, and that's all I'm seeing at the moment. So, um, yeah, we didn't realise that howitzers were rather short ranged, um, or at least like these experimental ones are, you know, they're powerful, um, they're rather short range, so if I had taken close notice of it, I would have got a longer range victory, but it's, howitzers are very powerful though, so once you get them into range they're fairly useful. 
So what Dark's gonna do, I'll try and do is try and just put like a couple of skirmishes here and cordon off the bridge area. But um, um still has the Austrian player if he doesn't muck around, still has time to get over this bridge. Um, so if he doesn't muck around, he still could get over there and connect with his ally. But we'd still have better terrain up here. Um, and as long as we block this area off, it couldn't be outflanked. So it gives us a still we still have a slight advantage in that aspect. But he doesn't seem to want to move, so. I'm sure that was annoying the Swedish player at the time. It wouldn't me if I were in the Swedish position, person's position, to be honest. Um, I just like moving some more of his, moving more of his forces now. That's just the Hungarian fusilier, fusilier, but no, he's not moving anything else. So it's interesting what he's trying to do. I thought he had more infantry than that, to be honest. So I'm, I think some sort of carry fight takes off. So it's been a while since I actually did this battle, of course, a long time. So. Just trying to remember how it went. I'm gonna go into triple speed here just because it's a long, pretty long battle. I mean most battles on Napoleon are longer than other Total War games, I found. Um but because of all the fights again I'm on maps like Lodi with his bridge, bridges and rivers and stuff and you gotta be careful. I'm sure there's some sort of cavalry fight that takes place. Doc's got his uh, see what's that oh, Doc's just seized building, he's going to use this building trying to guard this area off. And we're both advancing up onto the uh, onto the Swedish person's position. But uh, feel free to skip guys if you want, because it will take a wee bit before we get going to the action. But the action is entertaining when we get there. So I'm basically just keeping onto that higher ground there, going to use that. Uh, we are going to have some artillery fire there. Um, I'm not sure why I wasn't moving. I can't really remember what was going on there. It was a while ago. The docks kind of just cordoned him off, the Austrian player here. With his, I think he's got like a unit of light foot in the building. So as long as he doesn't get charged by infantry, should be right. Docks moved several of his cavalry units up here. They seem pretty well. I think they might even be hidden. I'm not sure of them. Actually, I'm not sure if they are hidden because I wouldn't, don't know if I'd be able to see them. I'm not sure if that's how it works on Napoleon. Or not. So he's got a couple of his light foot up there. I think that was King's German foot there. I was sure there was a cavalry fight somewhere. Uh, I'm, yeah, I think here's where it happens. He's bringing some cavalry down. A large uh, wing of cuirassier. That there's six of those. They're really good heavy cavalry too. But um, he's got that much cuirassier. He's probably thinning out on something else. Uh, this. Buildings under bombardment or artillery. I suppose I could slow it down for you guys to look at that. Because I'm just I'm just checking. I don't want you to miss anything. Here, this Swedish player has seen some of his cab around. I quite love love this um the debug cam. I can get really high and allows me to oversee everything from a very light. It's very handy when you're actually coordinating the fight. I can get right right down personal as well, of course. That'll be darn cool actually. Those those, those crazy. Yeah, so they're just preparing over the bridge there and bombing this building out. But it's just pretty slow work, really, for them. And I'll start reporting. Gotta love that British accent. Um, so I used my two cab over here to mark these lifeguard horse, but they're not very good cab. I haven't gone very cab heavy, to be honest. Um, but I'm just doing it to mark them. I'm sure he comes over. I'm sure the... Uh, he, he basically forces Doc out of the building, I think. Or something like that, or forces them back, and then he sends his cavalry over. Okay, maybe it's the Swedish player who did it. It's quite a while ago, he sends two units of his cavalry, lifeguard, and a hussar. I think yeah, he's sending it around this way. Um, yeah, Doc actually crossed into some of the range of some of those Jaegers up there. But he does get a really good charge with the tenses uh, into these back out of horse. And I believe the Scots guy is the gun cab, you know, so let's get down close and personal. And it was a very good charge by Doc, so it enables him to get the better edge of the fight. He's sitting in the rest of his cab here, just to ensure the victory, I suppose. I'm not really sure why, I, I, like, I guess, I don't really know why the speech player did that. If he didn't want to take the fight, he shouldn't have moved out so close like that. 
but Doc is easily the better exchange there, and that's a good start for us. I sh I'm still sure there was another cavalry fight down here. Yeah, here it is. Um, I took my eye off these two so other Swedish cavalry. He slipped them straight behind. They're going to go after the docks, guys. That was completely my fault. I was not uh, paying much attention to that. Uh, I can't remember what I was doing at the time. I think I was busy just trying to get myself into position and took my eye off those cavs. That was a really stupid mistake. I spot it now and I realise I'm way too lot slow here. So I'm going to get down to quickly help Doc as fast as I can. Uh, Doc is going to lose these uh, artillery here though, but these cav are going to get shot at in the meantime, so I think it's a pretty good trade-off if he loses that, uh, that howitzer, if, he, if we can get rid of those two cavalry units, it'll be a good trade-off, even if it goes goes pear-shaped though, honest, so um, that was my fault though, I was pretty sloppy there to be honest. I'm moving my guys up here, I'm about to start the engagement, now what I'm going to do is Doc's going to put some of his skirmishes on this side and some of his cab and we're going to go up from behind. I'm going to take my line, just take them in straight engagement, we're going to be disadvantaged by the terrain but I'll move my guys, up, my guards onto the flank there. So here comes uh, a bit of a fight, uh, infantry fight with the cab, but um, it isn't ideal for Doc there because he's not really in square so that's not ideal. But if you can hold them up long enough for my cab, which is closing in to get a good charge, you should be alright. So we just probably did capitalise there pretty good, so we lost artillery, but we really shouldn't have. That was really my fault, so um, I'm sorry about that. But here comes my Hazars, getting a good charge there. Same with my Lancer cab, which is a really good charging cab. And they come in nicely here. Uh, and Napoleon's graphics are beautiful. Something beautiful about Napoleon Total War's graphics. So they come in um, and they rough up those Swedish cavs. So while he has caused a bit of damage to some artillery, it's cost him all his cavalry to do it. So I don't think the trade-off is very good. So even though we ma I made some mistakes, um, it certainly um, turned out to be alright. Doc did make a few mistakes in turn though. He ends up shooting straight ahead and he kills a lot of my cavalry in the process. Um, which was, I, I quickly tell him, like, stop shooting, you're killing my cav. Um, it was a bit of a problem there. but. Um, I managed to get out of that one pretty usefully. So we did manage to stop that without too much bad losses. So we're not majorly going to need the artillery as long as we just use our numbers appropriately here for these flanks. Um, the Austrian player, I really don't think the Austrian player makes any attempt to come over at all actually. I thought their cavalry fight was going to be from him but I forgot that the Swedish player was getting creative. I'm going to go back to triple and fight's about to begin so I'll come in. So I'm moving up here, now terrain isn't really very good for me here at all, but I've got to get enough up just over this lip so I've got line of sight for my guys. So we're getting this skirmish fight, and I'm just trying to... We have killed their general, sir! Now they must break! I either got an extremely lucky shot then, because I have no idea how he killed their general. That or that... Oh, wait a minute, sorry. Doc made a bit of a trip over here. Did he, did he get the... Okay, one of his cab must have come over here and... I don't know. I didn't realise that it happened. Someone's general died. Which general was that? Yeah, it was the Austrian general, so... Interesting. So what I'm doing here is I'm using one unit of my, Jaeg my Jaegers and then my Elites. I'm going to swing on to the right and skirmish that side if I can. Um, Doc's going to move up onto the flank here to skirmish from the flank and he's sending his cavalry around. So the, this forces the Swedish player to kind of split up his line a bit and weaken it so that we can put more pressure on it while we skirmish away from down here. However, I did make a mistake. Um, I didn't... I uh, got too close for shrapnel shot and I didn't really move until it was a bit late. Here's some stakes have been placed down so I can't put my cab through. I sent my cab around as well. Basically all we're doing here is just charging it to the force some squares. The fatigue, sir, and must rest a while. Um, in this case he didn't actually get squares so his gun takes a pretty nasty blows. As you see, squares have been forced here, so this just means he can't put as much pressure down with, with, with these guys when we move up. However, uh, we probably should have moved, I should have probably made a hard push here on the right now. Um, but we mucked around skirmishing too long, and I ended up taking quite a lot of casualties from that shrapnel shot. Um, I pushed straight through here though, in the hopes I can kill his general, because I know that the loss of a general is a really nasty blow. In, in Our his, men are running, in, in, and Particularly in the Empire of Napoleon. Um, so I went straight through with it, and 
and I do believe this general really does die. Yep, there he goes. So we killed the Swedish general. And Doc's still got his calf. So now I'm moving my um my line infantry up onto the flank here. And I used um some of my cavalry just to disrupt this unit so I could get into position undis undisturbed. Now my uh, there goes my howitzers bombarding him there, so that should give his guys a bit of a morale shock. And I'm just getting my guys into a flanking position before I push up the centre here. He he keeps pushing back now to get uh, into position, but um, my guys get some very good shots there, and that unit's sort of down by 30 men, so that's very helpful. Down by 40 men, just like in a couple of volleys, so that was extremely helpful. Doc charges here, just forcing more um, distractions on him. Um, I really should have pushed here with my line of trim, I'm not really sure why I didn't, I think we're still trying to skirmish, should have just pushed, um, but I didn't think to. So um, I need to get these two guys, these, this foot, these two foot guards up because the uh, the eighth light, the eighth life regiment is firing by itself. So I move these two up, um, and I'm getting firing there now. I put plenty of uh, shots down with the with the uh, howitzer, but as you can see, that shrapnel shot, I really just should have pulled back. There. I don't know why I don't. It was stupid. Um, there's some nice stuff here from these uh, these foot guards. They do a very nice job. It's just the 8th of life regiment. I think I remember was actually targeted on that unit's white turn like that. I shouldn't have let that happen. So here Doc, uh, I asked Doc to force the square just by charging. And I decided that I didn't want to hit Doc's men. But by forcing a square on this unit, um, he routes it. And he's also forced a square on this one. So I'm going to go for a bayonet charge here. Um, hopefully I can get up the hill and do enough. Because Doc's done a really nice job in routing that unit for me. Um, now he's going back to normal, but I'm fairly close. I might take like one volley. Um, but we're going to the melee fight here, and that's a fight that my guards will win easily, because guards are very, very good at melee fighting, so that worked out quite nicely there. Yeah, that was, you know, Doc giving me that, forcing that square, and I was able to get up there and un uninterrupted. Uh, this unit here, I'm going to regroup for sh to shoot at this unit here. However, I think I might have accidentally left it in melee mode before it you know, got in. For some reason it went and joined that fight, which was really unfortunate, because I didn't want it to do that. So I decided to just push on here and just go straight to this line infantry. Um, the Austrian player, however, was tricky here. He slipped in. We were so preoccupied, because we didn't think he was, we was... We thought he was a player who wouldn't move, and he charged straight in. However, he just charged straight in front of my line infantry. So, although Dot's going to lose some guys, it's going to cost him like all these, most of these cross. Yeah, however, I wasn't really paying that much attention, so my guys get charged, but I don't get the square, so that was a bit sloppy. However, I don't really know why I didn't just push up my line infantry here, it was really stupid. Um, I think I was just so focused on what I was doing over here and enjoying the cinematics a bit. But um, although it cost me this line infantry, um, these cross are going to take a serious thrashing. I should have just moved these guys up. They've been under constant fire from that those cannons. I really don't know what I did that for. That was just stupid. But um, my guards do a really nice job anyway. And me and, and with Docs at skirmishes up. Here, Our men are running, sir. The Swedish player, pretty much. And we should be able to route these cavalry fairly soon as well, because they're not quite a bit of gunfire now. I've got my howitzer fire down on them for a wee while as well. So basically, really, like, the Austrian player was too slow to help him. I think they possibly could have beaten us too, because we weren't, we were not very good at it, to be honest. Here, I was still too sluggish to get the square, so I'd make a lot of mistakes and stuff like that. However, his guys are pretty stuffed by this point, I think. Pretty naked. And, did my guards die? No, no, they're up, they're up here. I don't know what the heck they're doing, though. I'm really not sure what my guards are doing, they're just, just standing are running, I don't sir. remember that happening either. But we finally get rid of these, um, we're about to finally get rid of these, these, uh, Carassia at last. And once the Austrian player loses all those, he's lost a lot of his army. So, uh, I'm just going to finish up the rest of my guys with these the foot units. Uh, and that's basically the, this fight against the Swedish player done. 
Um, but some pretty sloppy stuff there for me, like particularly not moving my guys up. I mean, the unnecessary losses because I, I just wasn't microing and paying it very much attention to be honest. But oh well. Uh, I think Dox lost his general somewhere there. But the Swedish player is out, so. Um, but mostly that this fight's really an example of just bad teamwork on the opponent's part, and I would have been really frustrated by the Swedish player. Because the Austrian player was just really completely ruined the team's chances. He didn't do anything. Um, it was really stupid, really. So I'm going to go to triple speed now while we reposition. Still got a reasonable, sizable force. Still, I've got most of my skirmishes left. I just should have looked after my line infantry so much better than I just completely didn't. I just completely forgot about that cannon firing me that whole time, and it was really stupid. Um, he's going to retreat his Jaegers back. And it's going to turn into a river hopping thing where we defend the river. Well, they defend the river from us. So we're on our way. Doc's still got quite a lot of foot. Uh, he's got a few skirmishes too up here. And of course I've got a general. And I've still got a really solid force, really. Although a few of my line are pretty depleted from shrapnel shot. So that was really stupid on my part, but oh well. I didn't know. I just didn't notice it, to be honest. So I'm just going to take up position sort of along here and Dark will probably take position along here. Yeah, I mean Napoleon just sort of getting on this, I would probably upload more and I don't have many Napoleons on my channel, in fact I probably only have a couple. Um, I do have a few battles here which I will do intend to record and upload. Um, the problem is though, it's just my connection to Napoleon is just not, it just doesn't work very well, okay, very rarely am I able to connect to Napoleon, so it's very unfortunate because I think it could be so much more fun um, if I you know, put more up. So it's, uh, I personally think for multiplayer online battles it's much more interesting to play than the Empire. Like Empire's got more factions and that's the one appeal of it, but the whole feel of multiplayer for Napoleon's just better than the Empire. Plus it looks tidier too, so I think it's just a better, better multiplayer experience, whereas uh, it's still a great campaign experience, but I think the best campaign experience as Empire really. Um, so anyway, I'm moving my guys into position here. And uh, we're under yeah, we're under the howitzer fire now. Um, but there's very little left of this uh, Austrian force as he didn't use it very efficiently. So I bring my guys here and I am going to put them into range very soon. So our guys should open up. Pretty sure they have range. For some reason, hold on, pause, unpause, there we go, for some reason the sound didn't drop there, not really sure what that was about, um, but it's getting quite close, so he's going into canister shot, which is a shrapnel shot, I always get it muddled, same thing, shotgun shot, um, but it's canister shot, I always get it muddled though, but we just open up skirmish, and we just skirmish him down. We've got, we've got the ability to do so, so that's what we'll do. And he'll still lose most of his men. Uh, he does, I'm sure he had some, somehow had Doc got behind him with these blade foot. I'm not sure how that happened, but he's going to duel with these Jaegers that were left from the Swedish player. I decided to deploy more along the lines and in a wee bit more covered areas. It doesn't mean I don't get quite as good shot, but I'm more shielded from that artillery. Um, but I'll use my own artillery to... I'm deploying it now to take down his artillery with, with, with uh, how it's a fire. Okay, let's see. So Doc Skirmish is just skirmishing away. And eventually we'll, we'll be able to wither him down because we've just got way more units to work with. But I can't really get any good angles on his troops, but it's still enough here to just destroy his units anyway, so that's all good. And here comes the uh, shots from my uh, artillery there. Let's see. We're punishing him for his uh, attack on us before. So anyway, um, he just sort of comes into the river here, which is a bad place to be, because so now he's just closer and he'll just die. Yeah. And eventually he just sort of loses steadily, that's nearly over at this stage. 
really the Austrian player just didn't do anything good at all in this fight. I mean, he was sneaky with his Kiev there, but that's only because we got so focused on everything else. But he could have been so much more useful to his ally from the beginning. He really could have. That cavalry could have been a big difference if he'd just brought it over much sooner. A glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. And Doc finishes off the last of his artillery. So there we go. That is a victory for me and Doc. Um, which I'm sure it will tell us very soon. There we go. So, um... There is the cards. I had 582 kills, 495 losses. Doc had 371 kills, 394 losses. Only 258 for the Austrian. He didn't do very well, but he didn't have a very big army either, for a fact. And the Swedish player, he did quite nicely too with 537. He did very well on his own. Uh, the kills, my foot guards. 102, 95, and my Jaegers, and some of those, the 8th Regiment there, and some of those skirmishes did pretty good, but my Musketeers, look at this, like 70 lost. Um, all that just because I didn't move them. Um, my Cavs didn't do very well, but they caused good distractions, so that worked alright. Um, 69 losses that one, just because I didn't move them, it was really stupid. You should never do that. Always check to see if you're in range of that, and don't get too distracted with anything else. Um, but... I hope you enjoyed that one guys, I know it probably wasn't super exciting in places there because it was quite long but it was a fun one to do so good game to Doc, Firm and Brubara die um, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll aim to bring you more Napoleon as much as I can so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon next time